Dynetics is the prime contractor for the Universal Stage Adapter, and we're responsible for designing and developing and testing and delivering the Universal Stage Adapter for each flight. The Universal Stage Adapter, which is the adapter that sits between the Exploration Upper Stage and the Orion Crew Vehicle, and it provides the communication pass between those two things, and also it houses the payloads as they travel into space. So we can take large payloads such as uh, lunar landers or lunar gateway modules that will all be part of the cislunar environment. Here in Decatur at the Hardware Integration Facility, we accept all the panels and the components that are part of the USA, and then we assemble those together so that we can prepare them for their various test phases. And then after test, we get them ready to deliver for flight and they are transported to the Kennedy Space Center. We're really excited about the role we've played um, in this important and historic mission for Artemis One, this first launch. For the Artemis One flight, it's the development of the exhaust gas heat exchangers that are inside the engine compartment as part of the core stage, as well as the development of a core stage pathfinder that was used in the logistics planning and practicing from moving the core stage between different sites, uh, as well as some other simulators um, and ground support equipment. The Pathfinder was a full-scale mock-up of the stage, and they used it to test the transportation pass that the stage would go from the Michoud facility to the Stennis Space Center down to Kennedy Space Center to prepare for launch. I think everyone's excited about our potential to return to the moon in, in as early as 2025 now. From Dynetics perspective, we have been working on our lander concept and we've spent a couple of years working um, with NASA on that concept which provides some unique capabilities for both carrying crew and cargo to the surface. The Dynetics human landing system is essentially a pickup truck from uh, lunar orbit down to the surface. It's very similar to the Apollo uh, LEM in that it uh, takes crew down to the surface of the moon, but this will be more capable. Not only will it take crew, but also a lot of cargo, uh, and it will be able to go back and forth several times with a single vehicle potentially, um, but also stay for long periods and go to any part of the moon. So in order to be reusable for HLS, it means we have to be able to refill the propellant tanks and the consumables in lunar orbit. It's critical to do that because that enables us to drive down the cost long-term. And by driving down the cost, NASA and others can do many more things with that funding to do more activities on the moon and prove out the ability to live on the moon long term. What's different than what happened in the Apollo days is that commercial industry does have the technology. We do have the ability to do that, but it's never been put together and actually demonstrated. So that's really what this program is about, is working with NASA in a partnership but commercial industry is in charge of developing that system and then selling it to NASA as a service. I think the opportunity for both NASA and other commercial entities and customers for both human transportation as well as cargo um, is emerging and we can foresee a time in the near future where there will be multiple customers that are looking to deploy um, cargo to the surface and also to extract materials um, from the, the lunar surface and return back to Earth. We expect to see a relatively steady cadence of Artemis missions later this decade. Uh, SpaceX is scheduled to go first in 2025 or 26. We hope that we'll be able to have the first landings in 27 and 28. And then hopefully just about every year, starting in the late 20s or early 30s, there'll be crew and cargo missions going. So the laser air monitoring system is uh, part of the Artemis II launch, which will be the next launch, um, and then it will be in subsequent launches after that. And it is a, providing a low weight, low power, and small uh, size capability for air monitoring that uses laser technology and is lighter weight, but can still have the accuracy that's necessary for monitoring the air in the Orion module. At Dynetics Lidos, we're honored to be part of the Human Spaceflight Program. Uh, being in this business requires talent. It requires the ability to develop and deliver to our customers uh, at speed and scale. But I think the most important thing that it requires is to have people that are passionate about the mission. And it's 
very easy, quite frankly, to attract people to the mission of human spaceflight. And we're honored to be part of such a program that's so important to the future of our nation and the future of our world.